Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Happy to Health podcast. I'm Danny Williams, and I'm going to be joined by Dan Hancock and Ben Lewis. And in this episode, we're interviewing Danny Buck, multiple business owner and a good friend of mine. It's a really interesting conversation where we cover a whole range of topics. So stay tuned, give it a listen, hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed recording it. So for the listeners and viewers who don't know, Danny is a multiple business owner and an incredibly successful one at that. Uh, a couple of the brands he's created include premium jewellery brand Crafted and the hugely successful eyewear brand Circular, just to name a couple. Uh, Danny, I know we've not actually met in person before, but I think it's fair to say over the last couple of years, we've built up a pretty friendly rapport. Yeah. Um, clear to me, you've always been you know, a genuine, transparent guy. And I think it's pretty reflective in your businesses as well. Um, so for myself and happy to help, lads, just want to say thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. What a lovely intro. Yeah. <laughs> sounds yeah, sounds um, mad when you hear someone else say it like that. I just, I'm just a little scally from Stratford, you know, just, just try to try to make my way through life at the moment. And yeah, that's a, that was really lovely, mate. You made me feel all fuzzy on a Sunday. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> well, it, it, it's all honest words. And you know what? It's, you know, the humility of your answer just there just speaks volumes. Um, so we've done our digging, of course, we've looked into you and that kind of stuff. And I think your story is well known by many by this point, but if you could best describe yourself and your journey in sort of 45 seconds, a minute, what, what would you say? All right. Wow. Um, so we, we, I started out as a, a marketing agency owner uh, and I grew it to, it's about 105 staff. And at the start when I was 22, uh, it was, it was wonderful. It was like the startup culture grew it all the way up. And then it got to a point where it got quite corporate and I kind of realized in myself at that point that that's not what I want. I don't want a, a big business. I don't want like all the like operational boards and corporate structure and stuff like that. So mm. I left, I left that company and then I started um, the way I describe it is, is, is kind of like digital property developers. So it's, it's growing uh, direct to consumer brands and, and I wanted a culture, which is a bit more free. So I love to travel. My wife loves to, loves to travel, and we wanted a, a, a company where it was just just freedom. Freedom over money was the main thing. Uh, it's getting to that stage where it's a bit more corporate now. Um, it's it's grown quite big, as you mentioned. The brands um, crafted being the biggest, but it's 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 kind of that. The best way to describe it is it's a company which um, focuses on freedom, but. We, we sell products to, to customers. I mean, it's as simple as that. We sell, we sell products yeah. to customers, but it's more than that to me. It's a lifestyle. Uh, and some people say you shouldn't, you shouldn't like grow a lifestyle business, but I mean, the size of the business is now, it's, it's ridiculous. It's way bigger than the agency was back then. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, it's more meaningful than that. And, and when we finally do, we do, we'll do a piece on Brand Builder itself and actually like get that through, I think, I think there'll be a, um, you'll, you'll get a bit more of my personality out through that company. Um, but yeah. yeah. In short, we're digital property developers. We sell products to consumers, direct to consumer, and um, and we're doing well. Yeah, what a lovely description. <laughs> we'll, we'll touch back on some of the things you said probably later on in the conversation, but you spoke about it already. It's that culture of building brands and living free, which is a quote that I picked from um, when I was looking on Forbes, which it was um, mentioned in, and yeah. you kind of touched on it. Then it's about a lifestyle, it's about a culture, and I think you know your your ethos is you know, it's, it's throughout every business you can see that. So yeah, really impressive. Um, one thing that we talk about all the time is kind of healthy habits, healthy routines. I see sometimes you're sharing quotes on Instagram and then I might have even shared the same one the same day. And, you know, we've got that in common. I think you've definitely, you're, you're aware of your mindset, which is really cool. Um, if I was to ask you something about your routine, do you have, you've got a very flexible lifestyle, like you said, but do you have like a morning routine? Is it something that you have to do every day when you wake up? Is it kind of follow or are you quite are you quite flexible? It's 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 a funny one that yeah I, I I talk some of my business partners talk about morning routines and it's it's something that I, when I don't do it I miss it um, but yeah. for me I have I have kind of one rule I I don't adhere to time pressure so if I don't feel like going in the gym right away I just need some breakfast something I won't do it and if I like I'll go I'll go later I'll go when I feel like going same with like the mm-hmm. office like there's no working hours uh, at the company. Because if you don't, if you wake up like had a couple of drinks last night, if you like you don't feel like working in the morning, then you're not going to be at your best anyway. So I guess my my morning routine is getting up and and kind of discovering how I feel, and then what do I want to do today, and then that's I'll, I'll go with it. 
like that. I love that. I love that insight. That's so. I think it's so crucial. And I think we've almost got a culture now where, like, you know, like I said, these pages of Instagram and people sharing quotes, there is a pressure. I feel like there is a pressure to be so flawless and so perfect. But I'm sure that's probably one of the contributing factors to your business's success is that you have flexibility to respond to how you're feeling because sometimes it probably is overlooked. Yeah, it's um, Instagram has been amazing for business, but you know, I think I think it's kind of getting to the stage now where people understand that it's a it's fake. You know, there's a lot of fake out there, and and, and people get that. You know, you, I mean, look at all the like the Caroline Flack stuff and stuff like that. Like you you can't tell what's behind the eyes, um, and a picture. They say a picture paints a thousand words. I think that's wrong now, um, because behind you don't know. I think you really need to. I mean. We talk about um, something I wanted to talk to you about. Like I've I've never really been like an anxious person, or um, I, I like I've I've been around people with mental health issues and stuff like that. But for me, I've never really had anxiety until uh, after lockdown. Uh, I think it was my birthday last year. I've never really spoke about this actually, um, and it was just because I wasn't uh, around people, I wasn't socialising with people, and things like that. Yeah. I I got anxious for the first time, and I feel like that like you can see all this 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 whole digital world it's like it's a world within a world it's not the real world like and you can you get to this point that you think everything's okay and i'm like like i'm i'm all in lockdown all you were doing really is like like zooms and things it's a digital yeah, world yeah. actually speaking in the real world so um i don't know where i'm going with this but yeah just just it's <laughs> the whole, you know it's, it's just that whole like that the whole fake uh this facade like i just feel um I feel it's 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 not the it's not the truth, um, and I, I think people are starting to get the gist of it now as well. And, and people are now like starting to share more about themselves, and I like that you know, the, the humility side of it. I feel like that's that's what's working on Instagram. If you like, that's what you know. People are actually like buying yeah. into. Yeah. Well, firstly, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate your your you know your honesty there and sharing that with us. Um, but yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think one thing I've always loved about the way you are on social media and a handful of other business owners is the transparency. Like not all business owners are like that. They'll happily share their numbers on social media or if they're having a bad day, if they're hungover or, you know, this idea that you've got to be flawless, you know, is, is ridiculous. And like you said, a picture painted a thousand words probably used to be true, but now I've it's been- like in a thousand words of whatever you want it to paint. And that's where yeah, it's, it's. I've been guilty of it in the past, and I know I have. And, and people will will point it out. Like when I started, it, like you, f- you feel like you had a point to prove, and um, you're trying to compete with somebody's level ten when you're just at level one. And I was sharing revenue numbers and things like that. No context, revenue numbers basically. Like there's no profit in that. There's no returns in that. Like, and I've become self aware to to admit those mistakes now. I, I've 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 developed um, mentally. Like I, I don't I don't feel the need to share these things anymore. Like. Mm. Uh, and I feel it's kind of, it has got to a stage now where people, people know, people, people get it. Like it's, um, yeah, people have caught up to it, I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, mate, and yeah, a big thanks for sharing that as well. And just shameless plug. So the reason that me, Danny and Ben all know each other now is um, we work on the award for mental health and exercise coaching. So essentially we, we train up fitness professionals to learn more about the benefits of exercise on their mental health. And one of the amazing things that we have now when we step in a room, like you just said, they're like, well, oh, I didn't really plan on sharing that today. That what we then realize we get into a room with people and then it's just this normal conversation now and it's nothing to be ashamed of it's nothing it's not this taboo subject that should be hidden away and i always say to people people think speaking about depression is depressing but actually talking about poor mental health or our mental health in general involves struggle overcoming hardships and um, viewing life's obstacles as challenges that we can overcome and that's a inspiring thing to talk about so Let's yep. normalize this conversation. Um, I'd like to jump back to something that you said earlier, um, if you don't mind. And we hadn't actually planned to ask this question, but I think it would be a really interesting one. You've kind of spoke about the culture of your company at the moment. And I think we would all agree that some of the things that you have done, some of the ideas that you've had, and the business is quite progressive. But just because the business is progressive, that doesn't mean the company's progressive and the way that you treat your staff. So what do you do to ensure that um, that that team culture, that team morale, um, and as well as the business is progressive, what do you do to make sure that the company's progressive as well? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, so I value it very, very highly. Uh, I value my team's mental health very, very, very highly. Um, I 
I've built, so it was never supposed to get this big, first up. It was never supposed to, to be like this. It was supposed to be a way that me and my wife could travel to look after our mental health because traveling is what we like to do. We, we feel happy, happiest when we're on planes and going somewhere. Like that's, that's what we love to do. So we built the company with, with that in mind. And then we added one person and two, per, two people and three people and four people. And all of a sudden we're in this place now. It's, it's still very, very small for our, uh, our turnover size. Um, but the, the the culture is basically no working hours, no set place to work, uh, unlimited holidays, and and my view on it is if you're not motivated to work, don't work because you'll you'll work poorly. So it's 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 kind of it's it's a no rule thing. We we have targets to hit. If you can hit your target in an hour on a Sunday, then fine, have the whole month off. Like it, it doesn't really matter. It's all about it's about it's, it's there is high standards and there is results. Um, but I feel that we do so well for our size because everybody wants to work. And in order to make a place that everybody wants to work, you have to give those people freedom that you would want. So no, um, no operational structure. Uh, we brought people in from um, like a high level and they're like, what the fuck? How does this work? Like they can't understand like how it actually comes together because uh, it's, so, it's so flexible, but, but it works. And, yeah. and that's, that's something that I... That's, it's a place that I would love to work. That's and that's it. You know, I, if I don't want to, um, the office we've moved to um, Oddly Edge, Manchester now, and the office is the Wirral. Um, so it's about an hour away. I can't be asked some like some days. I can't be asked going to the office, so I don't. I work from I work from home, and lo and behold, like I'm not sat in a car for two hours. So I get more work done. So why would I force my team to do the same and sit in traffic for like two and a half hours and do nothing versus? You know, work from home, work from a coffee shop, work from fucking Dubai, wherever you want to go, just go work. Like, and then the work's better. So I, th- I feel like that that's that's something that we've really instilled as a company, and it, it seems to be working. Brilliant, yeah, hundred percent. And I think obviously gauging by what you are like, um, maybe you might not term the words or want to take ownership right now of the definition of success. Um, but that is probably what you can owe to the success of the company. But when it comes to your personal success, what do you owe that to? Is there any maybe specific things that have happened within your life, any specific um, trainings that you've done? What sort of life experience would you say has is, is led to the level of success that you and this progressive company has? Jeez, another good question. Uh me, no, get no, me, pressure, uh, no pressure. No pressure. No, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's get me, get me thinking. Um, so I don't, um, I don't really like attention as as a person. Like I don't really like to speak about things. Uh, I might have done in the past to like try and like get some consultancy or something. But now, like, um, I think for me, I, I don't, um, I don't really give up. It's it's a, it's a weird trait. Um, I, I'm gonna go with the story. It's coming in my head. Um, basically my, my family, um, some, uh, Irish descent and my, my family have got this weird stubbornness of never giving up. And I'll tell you a story. So we were on, um, a stag do in Norway and one of my uncles had, um, had, yeah, like a, like, like fake teeth, but like, you know, when they have like a, a brace and, and then like they come out, so base fell over in the snow. Um, like bailed, uh, going down a mountain, bailed. Anyways, his teeth came out, lost his teeth. And for two days, my my family looked for this fake, fake um, tooth in the snow and they found it. They fucking found a tooth in snow in Norway. And I just, I, I, that for me was like, and I remember my uncle saying, we never give up. Like, I was like, yeah, fucking hell, that's weird. We'd actually don't as a family, we never give up. So I think when I've had hardships and I've had failures and things like that, I'm just like, you just don't accept it. Like it, failure is a good thing. It's, it teaches you and things like that and you learn from it. But I think probably one of the reasons why I've been so determined is that we just, we never give up. Yeah. As a family. What an incredible story. <laughs> it's, stupid. it's so I stupid. I give it up ever. I'm going to think of those teams. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant, mate. It, I guess it just shows that kind of determination and drive that you've got. So there's times that you've touched on and um, what you shared with us already about you're creating this culture and this environment and to create that freedom, ultimately, to give people that drive to move forward. So I guess one of the questions I want to ask you is how do you manage that environment around you in order for you to succeed in your business environment, but also for your team to succeed as well? Yeah, it's, um, it's about getting the right people 
Um, we've we've nobody's left the company yet, but we've we obviously made a couple of um, uh, we've we've sacked a few people. Uh, it's 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 about it's, it's about getting the right people. Attitude over ability. They you know the, there's no management involved. If I'm honest, there's it, everybody knows we're, we're we're going towards the same goal. Uh, everybody wants to be in a in a growing company somewhere like uh, a company with vision. Uh, it's going somewhere, and that's my job. My job is to make sure that the company is growing and 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 we are actually achieving growth um but with you know with with the people themselves there's no management it's you know we, we communicate every day and uh, on whatsapp and slack and or whatever other digital media and we meet up and we have coffees and we go out we have parties and all that sort of stuff you know it's it's a friendly environment but there's no management they they they, they manage themselves and you know if 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 they don't if they're if, if they have to be the right people, and we know if they're not. And everybody that's at the company is 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 that level. They they have a good attitude. I think that's that's the one thing I, I I'd probably say I'm really quite strong at is 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 being able to see uh, the attitude in somebody quite early on. Like within within 15 minutes of meeting somebody, I, I can tell. You know, if they talk quite negatively, like straight away, if they're bitching about somebody, like straight away, you know that they're not they're not the right vibe. Um, but like, yeah, we, we we've had a weird like we've we've had. People who like one one probably the maybe the second um, person to come work for us was was working in a bar. Uh, he was he was behind the bar, uh, Josh, and and he's he's phenomenal. Like he's absolutely phenomenal. He does email marketing. Um, he does all our e-commerce. Never never done it before, but because he had an amazing attitude, it was like, well, here's open book. Here's here's what we do. This is how we do it. He came on board, learned it, took like like a duck to water, just took it away. I think. Wow. Can I ask how did that go? Did you just like was he just serving you in the bar one day and you were yeah. no, yes. like so so basically it was back on the world um in a bar called uh, a restaurant bar called Gusto. It's kind of like an Italian Italian restaurant. Uh, and he, he was just serving me like cocktails for about two years, <laughs> something like that, about two years was going in and we just talked to him. He's a great lad, like just just like just a, a great attitude. Can't really say much more than that. And I was like, I don't know when, but we'll definitely do something together one day. And a year later, uh Hired him and he came on board. Yeah. Wow, the the longest job interview ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, is that me? You're good, Danny. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, can you can you see me? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, my thingy just froze for a sec there. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, was it Josh's name or sorry? Yeah, Josh, yeah. Yeah, so like you was just talking about then, you kind of live in 50 minutes or so, or 50 minutes to two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ones, you know, got potential. One of the things I wanted to ask you is, because I feel like you're very self-aware, like you touched on before, is how do you tap into your own potential when you feel like you're capable of achieving a lot? Like, I know you will be, you're a driven guy. How do you tap into your own potential? Because there's times, like, I, I did the first time my hands up, there's days, even weeks will go by when I know I'm not fulfilling my potential, then I need to snap out of it. I know a new Monday comes around and I might write, you know, start fulfilling my potential. I need to start working harder or start doing this, start doing that. How do you kind of, you know, when those days inevitably come when you might procrastinate or you might be a bit slower than normal, how do you kind of snap out of it and think, right, I've got more potential, I can be giving more here. How do I tap into that? Or how do you tap into that, sorry? Yeah, it's quite a timely question um, because recently so i i know when i'm going to get burnt out I, I i can i can feel it coming on um i have quite a lot of brain fog um and i don't want to work so that for me is a signal that i need to rest i need to rest my mind not my body like yeah. the gym all that sort of stuff i need to i need to rest um I'm, during that period i will i will like seek innovation so uh, an inspiration so i'll, I'll read um, I'll go to somewhere near the sea. Like, uh, like I, I need, I, I know I need to get away. Yeah, um, and that's the, the reason I say it's timely. Is I've got to that point. So I, I don't know if you're aware at the moment, but in our industry, it's it's, it's changed quite a lot this year. So um, from a marketing perspective, you could use like Instagram and Facebook ads and things like that to to grow your business. But it's been quite um, quite like quite bad recently. If I'm honest, it's uh, it's it's. It's it's become very difficult to 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 grow in that channel. So it means like it's, it's changing. You need to reinvent and be relevant again. Mm. Um, so like 
you get to this point where you feel like an imposter and like you, you feel like you have to, you have to like reinvent the business. You've got to go in and like what's working, what's not working, like suss it all out and stuff. So I, um, I got to this point. It's like, well, fucking it. Like, have I, you know, am I, am I good enough for this role? I, am am yeah. I actually like, I'm, so, I'm supposed to be a CEO. I don't want to be. You know, Man, the position you found yourself in after several years of, of business owning and managing, like you're asking yeah. yourself questions, but you're right. It's constantly innovating and adapting. I think it's probably what separates you from potentially other business owners is that ability to adapt and move with the times. I think it's, um, I think it's making yourself, like putting, never, never getting complacent. So always, always like every day is, every day is a chance to learn and just thinking like, like right now, like TikTok, I, 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 hundred um, percent put TikTok. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm just not learning it. Can't be asked. Everything's working now. And that was complacency. I, I got in a, in, a, in a position where I was complacent. What I should have done is I should have done what the boys at Gymshark did and they went bang on the platform straight away. Even if it fails, they've tried, they've gone. And that's what we should have done. And we missed it by a year. And lo and behold, there's like, we probably, we disrupted the high street with that of what we've done. But the, now there's people who are disrupting our model because they're shit hot on TikTok and you have to be in my, in my role. I have to be relevant. You have to make the company relevant. So I probably was a year behind with that, but, Again, it's a lesson learned. I understand it now, and now I've got to develop. But it's in terms of like reaching my potential. Like it's it's a battle every day. You've got you've just got you've got to you've got to um, feel confident with what you've done, but also be humble enough to realise there's so much more to go at. Yeah, definitely. And what we quite like to say to people is, in order for that sort of perfect balance of growth, exactly kind of what you said there, you want to be proud of where you are, but then striving for more. Because yeah. if you aren't proud of where you are, you'll become anxious and, and you won't be as fulfilled because you're chasing something. And if you become too proud, then you'll become complacent, um, which kind of links into my next question. So I'd be keen to speak to you a little bit about mindset as well. So um, mindset is a term that's kind of flung about quite a lot at the moment. But really, mindset is human behavioral psychology. It's good mental health. It's awareness. So. I've got two, well, kind of got two questions. The main question is how important is mindset or looking after your, your mental health um, when it comes to your running the business, but also how important is that for your creativity as well? And one of the things that potentially would be quite cool to touch on is um, the Cristiano Ronaldo billboard. <laughs> yes. I think that links into that as well, because um, I don't think that's something that anyone could have thought of. So what, again, like I said, how, how important is mindset to that? And yeah, how important is it to that creative process as well? Yeah, I'll probably open with what, what mindset is to me. Uh, so I, I, I value it highly, first, first and foremost. I really value it very highly. Um, for me, getting, getting in the right mindset it involves uh, training, um, involves having something to look forward to. So I've, when I've spoke about this before, I, I love my wine. Uh, so I love, I collect and I invest in red wine and I buy lots of wine and something that I've just, I enjoy. So at night, um, I enjoy a glass of wine. And that for me is something to look forward to in the day. And then in the morning, I look forward to a nice coffee. So if I, I feel like that that part of like being in a good mindset is always having something to look forward to. Uh, it involves training, it involves sleep. Like I feel um, in the in the whole like business world, like I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead and all that shit. Like it's just it's just bollocks like what they're, they're talking about now in like in all the Silicon Valley sort of areas and things like that is, is like how much sleep to get. I think if I, if I sleep well, um, like I, I could, I like, I could honestly, I could drink all day. And then if I, if I slept, I'd be fine. But if I, if I don't sleep, that's when, that's when I'm, I'm not creative. I'm uh, in a, in a bad place. I'm moody and all that sort of stuff. So for me, if I sleep, that goes into the creativity thing. Like I, I value it really, really highly. Um, I like to get exhausted uh, in terms of like exhausted in my mind, exhausted in my body. So I actually like enjoy going to bed and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think I think from a, to talk about mindset, and I, I know it's like banded around quite a lot at the moment, but um, it's it's more important than physical health. I think for me, because I if I'm not in the right mindset, I won't go to the gym. I won't train. I won't walk. I won't you know, I'm not a good husband. I'm not a good family member. Like I'm rubbish, rubbish for the company, all that sort of stuff. But um, in terms of the, the billboard and where that came from, if you want to go and go into that. Uh, so 
I, obviously, a bit of a madman United fan. It's not a great time to be a United fan at the moment, but I'm a good, <laughs> good, good supporter. I've been supporting them for like 25 years now. Um, I'll go into the, go into the game for 25 years. Um, so I just, Ronaldo for me has been um, the, like, the ultimate professional. He's, he's just, he's incredible. What a, what a wonderful human, like incredible human. Uh, role model. Um, him and Alex Ferguson have been role, like proper role models to me. Um, but where that came from was like me and my dad have we we've been going to the game as say like twenty five years and he he is obsessed has always been obsessed with Ronaldo like every every year since he left he's like oh he's coming back look at the transfer window he's coming back he's coming back he's coming back and then this time he was like oh he's coming back gone that was me every single transfer window <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just like it's like it, checking the gossips coming back he's coming back and then it, like this one he's like oh look it looks like he's coming back and I was like nah. He's like, oh, he's going to City. I was like, absolutely no chance. I didn't believe it for one second. Like, I know it's like it could sound rich, but if you like look on my Twitter feed, I was like, I refuse to accept this news until it actually happens. Like, I just didn't believe it was going to happen. Um, and then throughout the day, I just, I, had, I just literally had a hunch. It was, it was going to come to United. It looked like he was leaving, and there was no chance he was going to City. So I booked the billboard out, and we 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 outbid um, Lab Bible, a Sport Bible. Um, for that billboard but I got in really early I knew it was coming we got the creative ready I was like so I paid for it so it was going to be a loss if, it, if he went to City I was going to have egg on my face big time there but like um, we just booked it out and just went for it we sat in a, sat in a beer garden uh, with my cousin who's um, our marketing director and she was on the phone doing it all that and I was like planning the creative signing it off and then bam yeah that's how that one came about and it worked uh, and then it was it got featured on Sky Sports News um, I ended up doing a BBC interview like everything that was I I saw it everywhere and I thought, wow, this guy's a genius. I, 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 I was showing it every time it came up on my newsfeed. I was, this is Danny Book. Look what he's done here. I was, I was showing everybody it. So, yeah, great work. <clears throat> yeah, just, um, it, yeah, that was, it was, it was a bit of luck, to be honest. It was a bit of luck, but when you've, when you kind of, I feel like I know United, like inside out, I feel like I know them just because it's been a part of me and I just, I just, yeah, I did. I, I, probably, probably emotional, refused to believe that he'd actually go to Man City, but, um, <laughs> Yeah. As a fellow United fan, I was on the exact same page. I just didn't want to believe it. I was I was frothing at the mouth at the prospect of him in a in a city shirt. Um, <laughs> just touching back on the things you were talking about to help you be creative, and I know you mentioned exercise and something that me and the guys talk about all the time. And it's something that probably people don't talk about enough in this fitness world with Instagram and social media, and everyone's got to look so good. But I feel like not enough people. At, maybe starting to, but not enough still at talking about exercising just for your mental health and just for your, your mindset and being able to be creative. Um, so just a quick question. Do you exercise just for your mental health and do you think it directly impacts your mindset? And if it does, you know, could you see yourself exercising forever? Is it something that you always want to have a, as part of your kind of your routine? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so <clears throat> I, I got to, I've I've been I've been trying to get lean for years, and this year I realised I don't want a six pack. I don't need a six pack. It's not for me. I I, I it's not um it's not what I enjoy. Like I enjoy having some wine. I'm not uh, in terms of like diet. I'm actually my my food diet is is very strong, um, but I enjoy wine. So I'll never have a six pack, and that's cool. Um, but what I it took to this year to accept, uh, or to, for me to personally accept that that's okay. I thought like, like we'd see like somebody who's ripped, like fucking both of my business partners, like ripped, ripped to shreds. And you'd be like, whoa, like I, to be fit, I need to look like them. Um, but then I realized that's not sustainable for me. Um, and so I, I, I train uh, to feel good, like uh, in general. So mentally, physically, like I don't want moves. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I, I want to feel good when I'm on holiday as well, but I don't need a six pack. So um, it's more, um, I, I, I train because I actually enjoy it and it's a, a sustainable lifestyle now. Um, and it's a part of me, if you, if you know what I mean. It's a, it's yeah. training, it's a part of my identity now. Um, so when, when I train, I, I enjoy um, lifting and, you know, I've been fortunate enough I've put a gym in my apartment. So I've got, <clears throat> I've got um, like the, right, the, the equipment that I like to do. Um, and in, it, it requires a bit of discipline, but like I don't, it's not a chore to go in the gym. Like I feel like some people make it a chore and they don't want to, for me, it's like, well, it's actually like, I look forward to going in because it's on my terms now. Um, my wife, uh, she, she, she does 
Um, she does she does weights and stuff like that, but she loves uh, she got we, we've got a Peloton, and that's like a fucking disco. It's like a disco that thing. It's like it's ridiculous. Like you go on that, and it's and you feel you feel like you can take on the world when you get off that thing because it's just really positive. Um, and she you know she'll go on there every day, and she's fa- the same thing. It's it's become sustainable now. She's found a way that it fits with her identity, and and it's like. I can't wait to go on the Peloton tomorrow because they're doing the fucking great showman ride or like something, you know, something like that. And it's, I feel like that's, that's where you've got to get to with training. It's um, obviously calories and, and tracking food. And, you know, I've done, I've done meal plans and things like that and they, they don't fit with me. That it's not, it's not an identity for me, um, but um, tracking food. I, I look forward to cooking my own food way too much. And also just eating foods that I enjoy eating like way too much than to have a, a set meal prep company give me food, you know, meal in, meal out, and it's nine times out of ten, it's boring meals. I'm not going to look forward to. I think you hit the nail on the head at the start of this conversation. Having things that you look forward to, and I think yeah. exercise definitely falls into that category. If you don't look forward to your session, then it's never going to be sustainable. Yeah, uh, but the, the 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 meal prep, uh, sorry, the meal prep, the um, the meal plans uh, work for some people as well. What I found, um, like my brother, like he he almost needs to be told like what to, what to have, and he loves that side of it. So he's like. I don't want to think. I want to be told what to eat, and then it's 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 there for me. So I think it's a but it's about discovery. It's about discovery what works for you uh, and what's going to be sustainable. I think these people that will just they'll just shred for two months or do like dry January or you know something like that. They'll they'll do it just because it's a short term thing. It's not sustainable, and I, it took it took me probably probably well maybe 10 years, to be honest, to actually discover what works for me and what what's a part of me. Obviously, training is very important. Obviously, diet is very important. Um, but I just I just assumed that you had to be ripped and you had to have a six pack. That means you have to eat chicken and broccoli forever. And like, it's not, it's, you know, it's not that, that yeah. I feel like it's, you can go out and have um, steak and chips or you can go out and have a burger, but as long as it's tracked and it's, you know, it's, it's a part of it all. I think that that's, that's where yeah, I think I've answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm going to be very, very careful to put like a pin on that and then get back to you because that's what we talk about on a day-to-day basis and we'll end yeah. up, up down a rabbit hole and I'll get too over-enthusiastic and go on about that for about three hours. So um, I, think it's, I think it's safe to say that me, Danny and Ben would follow someone's journey like yourself on, on social media. Um, and I think that will inspire us probably on a day-to-day basis but i'd be curious to know is there anyone that you follow on your social media that inspires you and also how important is it to have that environment closed off to to those types of people because you know we're all familiar with the term that you're the sum of the five people around you what a lot of people don't realize is that isn't just physical people around you; it's the people that you digest on a day-to-day basis which is social media as well so yeah how important is it to keep um to follow these types of people on social media and yeah who would you say that you follow that inspires you danny yeah um all right god these are these are really good questions uh so um <clears throat> for me i don't want to come across like a knob idea but like um i i always wanted i always thought that when i um became a millionaire i'd be happy so I followed a lot of people that were talking about money and getting rich and all that sort of read loads of um, wealth books and all that sort of stuff. Um, and this is where I want to be careful, but that I've, I've made, I've made good money. Um, I've, I've, I've kind of got to that point. And now what I'm finding I'm doing is I'm actually seeking more um, happiness. Um, I'm reading more about um, like literally like how to be happy and, and like how to live a sustainable life and how to like, like go to this like next stage and somebody that I really, really respect a guy called James Smith. I'm sure you'll know him. Um, fitness guy. And he, he, he talks a lot about um, like kind of happiness after money sort of stuff. And like, I just love his, his whole like outlook on life um, in terms of like, he'll, he'll like to board meetings, he'll wear shorts and just like, he'll just, he's just, he's got a really good guy, uh, really good um, outlook. So I'm reading a lot. Um, I've read both his books, follow him on social. He's quite a good guy. Um, Stephen Bartlett's great for it as well. Um, read his book, really good. Um, his business partner Dom, um, I've become quite good friends with. Um, we were literally in lockdown, we're just going for walks around uh, here and just like so. I, I kind of at the moment, I, I like to follow people um, who have kind of made their money, but don't don't really talk about 
money and making money and like brag. Um, they talk a lot about their lifestyle. Um, they talk a lot about um, like mentality. To be honest, I think I think that's that's probably where where I'm at at the moment, and I can see it in in the in the books that I'm reading. I just I was like I've stopped reading branding books. I've stopped reading business books. I'm reading books that are like literally about the mind. And um, yeah, um, Simon Sinek is a really good guy for that. Um, I'm reading um, what am I reading at the moment? Um, oh, um, the Habits book. Uh, I forgot the author. Um, but yeah, just just stuff about um, uh, uh, atomic habits. Sorry, is it? That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just slipped my mind. mind. Clear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just just yeah. stuff like that. Like. Uh, it's, it's 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 strange, but you you don't really notice it until until somebody notices. And yeah, like it was Amy just saying, like you don't really read any branding books anymore. Like I, I read an amazing book like called Brand Sense, and I, I was just I was like obsessed with like building businesses and all that sort of stuff. But now like I kind of I don't want to like come across complacent, but like we've, we've built some really good businesses. I'm now like going into like the after bit. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, that's brilliant, mate. It sounds like you've been on, as, as we've heard from you as you're talking, you've been on quite a, a journey of this discovery over uh, a certain period of time in order to consume the right information, accounts, um, knowledge from areas that you know will help you grow and develop um, personally and professionally. So I think one of the things we would be interested to touch on is um, we've spoken quite a lot at length about social media and how important it is. And you touched earlier on how things have changed over the last year and how it's now harder for you to grow a business in that kind of online space just now. And um, with someone like yourself um, being the leader of the company, being in the public eye quite a bit in that sense, how important is your digital life um, in comparison to your physical life and what do you do to make sure there's a kind of clear distinction between the two or do you just make sure you're as um, transparent, uh, which we've touched on in the past, both online and then in your physical, personal life, if that makes sense? I think you need to be aware of it, how how much you're spending in, in the digital world. Um, like for me, this whole metaverse thing that's going on at the moment is 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 obviously amazing, but very, very scary. Um, it's it, I fear for my nephews, um, like the the younger, sound like an old twat now, but like the younger generation coming through, like, you know, if they're living in a digital world constantly, that's that's pretty scary for me. Um, but um, in terms of me being aware, I, I so buying, buying my dad a season ticket um, for United last Christmas was incredible. Um, to have one-on-one time, because there's no signal in the ground as well, I don't get signal. Which is brilliant. So I can't even if I want to, I can't tap into it and like escape. And it's it was a realization when I was trying to find uh, the, I, was trying, I was on my phone trying to find out what the team was, and I couldn't get signal. And then I just realized I was like, why am I on my phone? I'm here with my dad. Like this is this is priceless time. Um, and I was just you know th- that for me is like a pure escape, pure pure like escape from any work, any um, any digital world whatsoever. I'm there. I'm at the football, and I'm with my dad, and I'm and I'm in the moment. So I think be, just being aware of when when you're offline, like when I go on holiday, I turn my phone off. Me, me and my wife did it. We turned our phones off. Like and it was like, whoa, like why is why is this day taking so long? Like you're looking at your watch, going fucking hell. Like we got up five hours ago. Like it feels like the end of the day. Like and you're just aware you are aware of it. So I think the divide has to be yes. What a wonderful thing! What, what an area we, we live in. We can li- I can literally click some buttons and make more money. Like I can do that like amazing technology but if you spend too long on it like your brain tells you i got i got vertigo like like weirdly two weeks ago never had it didn't feel burnt out um but it was down to stress i was i was literally on my computer stressing out for some reason never never like like, never thought to myself i feel stressed but my body told me it's like you need to just shut down for a little bit um so i think yeah awareness is the is the answer to that understanding the, the divide yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, thanks for that answer. It's really, really in depth and gives that kind of insight. And I guess if you think back to what we touched on at the start of the call, when we're saying, you know, through lockdown, everyone went fully digital for, for settings like this, you know, to have Zoom calls and then coming out of lockdown and meeting people again, it's that adjustment being in the physical space and being able to connect with people. So how, how important do you think is that personal connection on a level certainly in a professional sense and in a personal sense as well 
Yeah, like like I said earlier on, when I, um, I mentioned about anxiety, like for, for me, um, s- humans humans are made to be social. Uh, I feel like you know that can be one person. Like if you if you're um, if you're afraid to go outside, and you know you you still um, you still need that company. It could be it could be a parent, it could be a brother, it could be someone. Um, but for me, I I I realized that way. That's the only time in my life I've actually felt anxiety uh, it was actually on my birthday and again i've not, not spoke about this it was on my birthday we were going in the office i knew that people were gonna be there and i knew there was going to be attention on me because it was my birthday like and uh, i was like i hate it when you get like a cake delivered or like you know like at a restaurant and stuff like I hate that attention but for some reason it started to build up so i just went in the gym trained i was like it's okay you know all these people like it's fine why why do you feel like this it's just it, it's because i'd been deprived of uh, sociability had been deprived of, of being around actual humans i'd only i'd only been doing it in the digital world and i realized then like i have to get out i have to go and speak to people i have to just meet and do all these things and like you think you kind of it reset a lot of people lockdown um i think it was very bad uh for for people in general um a lot of a lot of people's world um was was was, was shrunk um but for, for me i i have to like i had to reset like going for a meeting meeting someone that you've never met before. was like, whoa, fucking hell. That's scary. But like, but you've done it a thousand times. Like, so I, I feel um, you have to, humans need to be around other humans in a, in a physical sense. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really important. And I think one of the things that we talk about as well, which is massively important, is that, like you said, it's been a really traumatic couple of years, hasn't it? Um, but then when it actually comes to, the normalization of talking about our mental health. I'm not going to maybe go as far as saying it's been a good thing, but that has been a good thing for that because if that hadn't happened, obviously we wouldn't ever have wanted you to go through those anxieties, but that's allowed you to understand your mental health a little bit better. That's then allowed you to come and openly talk about it. And then that's going to allow for this free movement of people actually talking about our emotions in a world before where we probably didn't understand it and didn't appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's a nice. It's, it's a very nice way to think about it. Yeah. Um, I hope. I hope people who are still suffering with it can can have that awareness and self awareness about that. It has been a good thing, and they understand themselves a bit more. Um, but yeah, you you are right. For me now, I understood that. Um, I actually like. There was times as when you've got like plans every single weekend. You're like, fucking. I just want to sit on my own and chill. You know that's important as well, but um, in lockdown, it's like great. I don't. I've got no meetings. Don't need to do anything. I can just sit there and do everything on, on my own. But then I realised, well, actually, I'm not interacting with people properly. I need that, and so I did get that self awareness. I guess. Thanks for sharing that, mate. Um, yeah, what a powerful response. And I think you've hit the, hit the nail on the head again. I think humans need to be around other humans. I think we we're a we're a sociable being and i think we thrive off being around other people not just in work but in our in our personal lives as well um <clears throat> another question for you sorry bombarding your questions um, um, one at, we've kind of spoken at length about you know your 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 background and your history and a few past experiences but i'd love to know as well um what's something that's going on right now whether it be professionally or personally if you want to share that um, that's going on in your life that you'd maybe like to share with us. Is there anything going on work-wise, any exciting projects, anything you'd, you'd care to share with us or is it, all, is it all under wraps? I'm not sure if that's a difficult question to answer. Um, there's, no, there's, there's, there's nothing major going on at the moment. It's more, um, it's more this continuous growth um, that I, I am obsessed with growing the company because I feel like if you if you stat, if you if you stand still it's it becomes a bit um, it's just boring it gets boring like it's it's constantly testing yourself and yeah. not, that whole not accepting um, the first answer not like not um, like constantly looking for like ways to improve um, kaizen mentality. Um, so would you say that's your priority then? Would you, you know is, you know not just not just business growth but personal growth as well? Is that kind of one, the one thing you're looking to do twenty four seven? I'm a, I'm a weird one with the personal growth side. So like for me, it was, um, my identity was about, um, about just, just it's, I have, um, health, wealth, profile and experiences are my, my four things that I focus on. So like I look at, you know, 
from the, from the health side, like, am I actually healthy? Am I ill at the moment? Um, my legs are working fine. Like, so it's like, is my brain okay? Is my stomach okay? Like, so I, I do focus on that because you know what you know when it's not. Um, so I do fo- take vitamins every day, train four or five times a week, um, try and hit ten thousand steps, um, all that sort of stuff. Like, try and make sure my health's okay. Um, wealth in a very very fortunate position at the moment. Things are really good for us. Just kind of tick that box. Um, don't want to lose it, so I'm a bit obsessed with not losing it because um, that's happened to me in the past. Uh, then experiences, lockdown took that away. Um, we had uh, we were supposed to be going to Africa, we were supposed to be going to the Maldives, all those sort of things got taken away. Try to catch up on that now. Uh, and then profile, uh, it's not so much a um, like an ego thing. It's more, um, am I happy with my profile? Uh, you know, do people think I'm a bell end? Do people think I'm okay? Like it's like you know that sort of like divide yeah. you know uh, uh do do my team like me it's more like it's more of a close thing rather than a like an ego megalomaniac sort of thing it's it's just you know is am i happy with my profile so just kind of check in on that as well i think that's a great framework for anyone listening if they're kind of struggling with that that's a great kind of you know structure to look at things at. i think it's brilliant thanks for sharing that no problem yeah. no problem yeah, definitely. I like how you said health, first of all, because it's like if you get that right, everything else will kind of fall into place, provided yeah. you focus on the right things, if that makes sense, which which is brilliant, mate. Thank you for that. Um, and just, I guess, touching on the the growth that we've spoken about um, at length on, the, on this uh, call that we've got, is there one piece of advice that you would give a young Danny, Danny Buck, either starting out, going into school, or first starting out in business? What would be that one piece of advice? Yeah, I think I answered. I think I answered this on another podcast. Um, so, don't compare your level one to someone's level ten. I I got myself into trouble financially when I first started by trying to compete with somebody's level ten. I was trying to buy customers too aggressively and got myself into debt. So, I think the the best be be open about being a startup, and it will work in your favor so much more because people want to support you. Whereas what I did was I went straight out there. I was like, whoa, look how much we've done, like five figures in three weeks. And now we're on six figures. Da, 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 da. And everyone was like, oh, we don't need his help. Don't need our help then, does he? So it's like, but I did need the help. I was just, I was trying to compete with someone else's level 10 way too fast and got myself into trouble. Yeah, thanks for that. And it's something that we talk about at length, certainly between Dan and myself and Danny more recently, is how comparison can be the root of all evil at times if you're constantly comparing yourself rather than focusing on what you've got and being present in the here and now um, yeah. it's dangerous mate. thanks for sharing that no problem yeah no, agree with that comparison is um is an evil thing um it can be it can be good to to check in on like to be um to get some aspiration um but i, I feel like we're in we're, we're, we're getting closer to a world where people share the faults more than their edited pictures. So I think yeah. it's neat. Yeah. Right, mate. Love it. So um, one last question before we get ready to round off, because we've got a special surprise for you that Dan, I don't think Danny Williams has shared with you. We're going to finish off with a little challenge. So I'm going to let that Go sit on. and worry you for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to get some wine. I'm going to get <laughs> it could be done with wine. Um, <laughs> yeah, listen, mate, a big thank you for everything. We really appreciate the honest chat. I think we all um, respect your values massively. I think for anyone listening, it's really important to see someone with that level of humility. So a massive thank you for that. Um, and for anyone listening, where can they follow you to um, yeah, to find out a little bit more about your journey or to continuously follow your journey? Yeah, um, probably the only two profiles uh, I use are Instagram, which is the at the Danny Book, B-U-C-K, and Twitter, which is the same, the Danny Book. Brilliant, mate. A massive thank you. So, um, yeah, very exciting. We've got the very first H2H challenge. Um, I don't know who wants to introduce this. Ben, do you want to run uh, Danny through what we're going to be doing? Yeah, that's fine. So it's something that we want to introduce and we want to basically create a head-to-head challenge for all of our guests coming on to our podcast. Um, It's nice and simple. Hopefully you'll find. And um, basically... The main thrust of the rules are that we will need you to hold a squat and answer as many quick fire questions as possible. 
and such this out. On a hangover, you bastards. <laughs> all right. Some of, some of them are really, really simple. Others might get you to think a bit, all right? But basically, the number of questions that you get through will then be recorded on our H2H leaderboard, um, basically competing against other guests, okay? If you can't hold the squat for 60 seconds because you're hungover, um, then your time will stop and the question you finish on will be counted as your final question. Um, unfortunately, there's no prize as it stands at the minute. It's just bragging rights over everyone else that we get on. But that is basically what uh, our H2H challenge is. Fucking hell. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, I promise you, when we come up with the challenge idea, the intention was to make the guests feel good afterwards. I'm not trying to ruin you, Danny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, right. I've got a timer here. I'll give it the 60 seconds. Um, I've never done a 60 second squat in my life. <laughs> this might be a first time. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna set, I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh, exercise on my watch. Workout <laughs> <laughs> workout. Every little helps. Danny, even if you only answer one, because it's the first one, at least you'll be top of the leaderboard for a day. <laughs> so I'm all right. Gonna- Cool, right. Danny, do you have the questions there? I've got the questions ready. So, Danny, if you are ready, I will count you in. Okay, let's go. Ready? I am doing it. I am doing it. I am doing it. Three, two, one. Go. When was the last time you were drunk? Last night. This morning. (laughs) (laughs) When are you most productive? In the mornings. Who is your inspiration and why? Ooh, uh, Simon Sinek because he taught me about the why in business. Love that, love that. Who, uh, sorry, what's your favourite number and why? What's my favourite number? Uh, number seven, Ronaldo. Love that, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> um, in which subject were you worst at school? Uh, geography. Horrendous at geography. Okay. I, know, I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> in which subject were you best at school? Um, I didn't like school, uh, but in college, I was good at economics and business. Understandable. Um, (laughs) Left, what scares you? Can be anything. Scares me. Um, Standing still. Yeah, and cats or dogs? Last question. Oh, cats. I've got both as well. Oh, (laughs) I'm good. I stopped you on one or two, but I'm going to give you that. (laughs) Going to give you the last one. Very impressive. Well done. Thanks. Oh, feel sick. (laughs) Give it like five minutes. Might feel better. Yeah, that went quick, actually. Good. That's a good challenge. It's got got the blood flow going now to start my Sunday. That's the intention. That's that's the whole point. Hopefully, you should be feeling a bit better. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Great questions as well, by the way. Did you like them? Yeah, really, really, really good. Really good. Thought provoking. (laughs) <laughs> we don't want to get you thinking too much and you just like stuck on question one for like 10 minutes but yeah. you answered you answered eight questions so that was quite an impressive innings yeah not bad not yeah. bad so it makes you think quick as well <laughs> good. good well that basically concludes our our call our conversation um from myself i want to say a huge huge thank you this has been a long overdue conversation for me and yourself i think in general I've just it's been a pleasure having you on a podcast but also just on a personal level great to chat to you mate it's been a real pleasure yeah thank you okay that's the end of the episode I hope you enjoyed listening to it it was a really powerful fascinating conversation with Danny if you enjoyed it make sure you leave a review and give us a follow at the happy to help podcast all the help and support would be much appreciated so share it to your stories share it with your friends and yeah see you in the next one